Good morning, YouTube family. My name is Alicia English and welcome back to my channel. And if you are one of our Canadian viewers, I wanna wish you a very happy Thanksgiving from our family to yours. Today, we've seen all the fall colors show up on our strip right past our house here, and it is absolutely gorgeous here in the fall. We were given the heads up that it was really gorgeous here in the fall, and they did not disappoint. The trees are changing, and it really felt like fall Thanksgiving this morning when we woke up. But something else made us really feel like it was fall Thanksgiving this morning, because when we woke up this morning, the house was so chilly. We all went to grab our woolly socks this morning and crawl back underneath our covers because it was chilly in our house, which leads to the topic of today's video. But before I talk about that, I wanna show you a few exciting things that happened on our beginning homesteading journey this week. Last week, I showed you that we had our first chicken eggs lay. We got our chickens and ducks in the early spring. You guys saw when we brought them home and we were really excited to be able to add them to the start of our homesteading here on our acreage. So if you're new to our channel, we purchased this 1899 abandoned home with plans of doing homesteading and renovating this old abandoned captain quarters from start to finish, literally from top to bottom. And there are a lot of projects to do. And so all of these little milestones that happen on the homestead keep us really inspired, like having things like this happen. So these are the eggs that have laid over the last, I would say four or five days. And you can see we're, we've really filled our spiral thing here. I'll put the link to this down below. I think it's super cute. And every time you remove the egg, they all spiral down and make room for new eggs on the top. And we've got actually gotten more eggs than we've had room for, even after eating a few. So we're going to have to start another bowl. But something else exciting happened. We got our first duck egg yesterday. When we went to check for the eggs, we saw that we had our first duck egg. So that's super exciting. We've done a bunch of research. And yesterday I looked up and it said that duck eggs are really good for baking. Nice and moist and fluffy. And so I'm interested in trying that. Originally, I didn't think I would eat the duck eggs, but now that I've done some research, I think I'm changing my mind. Let me know if you had chickens and ducks, would you eat the duck eggs also? And of course, you know that we've spent the last week working on our greenhouse. And so we're going to be completing that this week, but we're really excited because on the 13th of October is Dayton's 10th birthday. And so tomorrow we are spending the day getting everything ready for his party, which is actually tomorrow night. We have rented an entire bowling alley out and invited all of his new friends from school and some of our new friends that we are now considering family here in Nova Scotia. And so it'll be really nice to have all of our people out to celebrate Dayton's birthday in our new spot. So we are really thankful, especially today on Thanksgiving, that we have met so many amazing families that really are just really feeling like family to us here. So we're really feeling like we're at home. Okay, so the topic of today's video is that the house is getting chilly. It's now mid-October, and there's something that we haven't gotten figured out in this abandoned home that is honestly being quite of a stressor and a struggle for us. We have been calling and calling and calling over the past several weeks, trying to have a company commit to coming to an appointment to see what type of heating system we are going to have in the house. And we've done lots of research and we know what types of heating systems that we think we want, but we can't get anyone to commit to come here and do a quote and then let us know when it's going to be installed. And it's getting colder and so we're getting a little bit worried that this isn't going to happen in time. And there's been a lot of things that we've learned about being here that we didn't know before coming to Nova Scotia, which is changing some of our decisions on what we want to do actually at the house here, especially in terms of our heating. So you know when we did our living room transformation that there was that sombrero on the wall above the fireplace and that we were pretty sure that the fireplace was not functioning, but that it had been converted into a spot for a wood stove vent to go up the chimney. And so we now are learning that the reason for that is for a couple of different reasons. One, this house is approximately, I think, 24 to 2,600 square feet. And so it's quite a large place to heat. And we've learned that based on the cost of the hydro here in Nova Scotia, the rates for hydro here are extremely high. We thought they were high in Ontario, but they are much higher here in Nova Scotia, which is having us really consider if we want to spend that extra money and have a complete heating system, or if we want to go with the advice we're being given by plenty of other homeowners in the area to have a supplemental heating that's much more sustainable, and that would be having a wood stove. And so the thing with that is, is that we would have to tear down some of the work that we did here in the living room when we first got here, 
not knowing that we would probably almost definitely need to have a wood stove in a central location in the house, which would mean that we would have to tear down and put a vent back where that sombrero was and have a wood stove sitting centrally in front of the fireplace here in the middle of the living room, which doesn't go with what I was planning for the living room. As you saw that reveal of that whole transformation of the living room, we really didn't want to have a wood stove. We wanted to have a main heating system in the house. But now that we've learned some things and we know kind of how the seasons are changing, it's something that we now know because of sustainability that we need to actually have a backup system, which would be a wood stove. So we are planning on having a heating system throughout the entire house. Hopefully I can update you later this week if one of the companies I spoke to shows up this week, fingers crossed, to give us recommendations on the actual heating system we're going to use, how much is it going to cost, and when are they going to come and install it. But for now, Philip and I are preparing to have a wood stove installed in the house so that we have a backup system. So this is where that would actually have to take place. So here is where we did the fireplace transformation and you can see that there is an old fireplace here. Thing is, is that it has been vented behind where the mirror here is, where a wood stove would have come out and then down in the front here and then sat right where this rug is, there would be a wood stove. And so we saw from original photos of the house that the people that lived here, I think three owners or two owners before us had a wood stove sticking out right here in the middle of the living room. And so when you would come in the door here, you would see that the vent would come across here, out down here, and then the wood stove would sit in the central location here. And then I would obviously also need to have a spot to have some wood stored inside the house. So this little faux look that I have is actually going to come become a reality on having heating coming from this room. And then we'll have to take their advice and figure out where we're going to have the central heating system in the house, whether that's a duct heat pump, um, ductless heat pump, propane furnace. We don't really know exactly what's going to happen yet. So I think honestly, about two weeks ago, we were kind of like freaking out about the idea of having the wood stove in the house, thinking that that wasn't going to be sufficient enough to heat the entire house because we are two livable floors as well as the basement. And we wanna make sure that it's sustainable enough for us to actually stay warm this winter, which is why we're going to be doing two different heating systems, as far as I know right now anyways. Um, there are apparently quite a few outages over the winter. And so we're really happy that we have a generator to be able to obviously generate heat and electricity if we need it. But we obviously wanna know that the house is going to be warm if we have any outages that last any type of like long duration of time. Because you can imagine if you only had a central heating system that ran with electricity and maybe your power was out for three days or longer, it would be really cold in the house and you would be paying a fortune having little plug-in heaters into the generator to be able to keep warm. And we know that because when we first got here to Nova Scotia, we didn't have any heating and it was April and it was still really cold in the house. So we ran three different space heaters um, we did have electricity in the house, so we didn't run them off generator. But when Philip's parents visited for that two weeks, we used three different space heaters. And the hydro bill for that first month was absolutely atrocious. And so we know that that's not what we want to do. We don't want to ever have to rely on that because we're just throwing money away by paying to have that extra hydro if that was to happen. So we want to be prepared. So today I woke up this morning and actually got a lead on having a whole bunch of wood dropped off for us to be able to use in whatever wood stove that we end up going to pick up in the next couple of weeks here because it is too late in the season for Philip and I to cut our own wood this year and have that wood seasoned where the moisture in that wood is not going to be too big. So today there's a gentleman coming this afternoon to drop us off a few cords of wood and now typically what we'll do is do our own wood and have it seasoned in for cut in the spring and then season all summer um, and then have it ready to get kind of set aside for winter when that happens, but we weren't planning on doing a wood stove at all. And so now we're kind of scrambling last minute before winter to kind of get this all figured out. So wood is coming today. And this week, I know I'm like fairly confident we have a few different companies coming to give us a quote. So fingers crossed, wish us luck for that. We hope that we can get a quote and an actual date that this is going to come and get set up. Um, and then obviously we need to have someone come and do a wet certification and change everything with our insurance and everything to have these types of heating systems in the house. So there is a lot of work to do here before it gets too cold. But in the meantime, we're finishing up the greenhouse outside 
And then Philip and I are just about to start tackling another big outdoor project before we head in to finish any renovations that are happening inside. So while we're doing this sort of update video, I wanted to update you guys. We've had so many questions about people asking us, are we going to heat the greenhouse? How are we going to ventilate it? And have we ordered our seeds yet? We took the suggestions that you guys left on the video and we ordered a whole bunch of seeds. We know that there's a few things that we'll have to get in the spring, like some of our uh, seed potatoes and things that are not available online right now where we are, but we got the majority of the items that we wanted to be able to start really early in the spring getting all of our starters done. And I think I'm gonna tackle some winter growing. I'm gonna go see if I can pick up any seeds like tomorrow when I'm in town that are kind of just left over from spring in one of the hardware stores and get a few things like those hardy plant vegetables uh, in the greenhouse right away this week. I know I'm super late, but I think just science experiment, we're gonna try it out and see if we can make something work. Um, so we are making a window at the back. And so there is a prefab spot right now that the window on the back of the greenhouse is going to go. So this week, Philip and I need to put the actual window frame into it and get the plastic on. And then we're contemplating on whether or not we're going to do a heating system in it. And we don't want to do something electrical that's going to cost money to heat the greenhouse. So what we want to do is do something solar powered if we are going to do a heating system in there this year. And so I've been doing lots of research on that. So if you have an idea for that, then let me know in the comment section. I've been reading up as much as I possibly can. And so far, I've seen a lot of really neat electrical systems, but it kind of defeats the the it kind of defeats the whole purpose of saving money growing your own food if you end up just spending it on the hydro electricity to be able to heat the greenhouse in the meantime. So I'm not sure if the cost of the hydro here would outweigh what we would pay normally if we just bought our vegetables. I know there's also that added, obviously, that it's fresh and organic and all of those good things, but really cost association is huge when we're going to be doing so many different projects. We really want to think and make sure that we're not heating things unnecessarily because we are heating the barn right now for the animals. So to heat the barn and then also to heat the house and to heat the greenhouse, we're really looking at a substantial amount of electricity and some of it is unneeded. So we're just trying to be mindful of those things. We want to be as self-sustainable as we possibly can. And that's kind of the goal on our homestead here is to be able to think of these options that we have that are alternatives to relying on having that really, really high hydro bill. So if you have tips, let us know. But anyways, I wanted to say thank you so much. We are so thankful to have all of you following our family on our channel. And Thanksgiving is a day where you really reflect on all the things that you're thankful for. I know that a lot of our viewers from other countries in the world, it's not your Thanksgiving yet. Um, but hopefully you can still think today and just know some of the things that you're really thankful for. And Philip and I are just so grateful to be living in this place that we dreamt of moving to with our family and so far, even though there's been a few struggles just trying to get things figured out with supplies or, you know, extra costs that we didn't associate in our budget, that this has been such a wonderful decision for our family. And we're so thankful to be here in Nova Scotia doing all these wonderful projects with our family and all the togetherness time that we get with our kids. And we're just thankful that we have you guys cheering us on on the other end. So I love you. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you tomorrow.